how to do child's pose elevated pressure glide. So for child's pose, you're going to come to a kneeling position. I've got my knees hip width apart and I've got my feet hip width apart. So it's not like the normal sort of yoga pose where you might take your knees really wide like this. We're looking like that from the front. Hips, knees, ankles and toes are all in alignment. If kneeling hurts you, hurts your knees, don't do the exercise. We're not putting padding under our knees, we're just not doing the exercise. Because if you're padding under your knees, you're not listening to what your body is trying to tell you, which is, please don't do this thing. Um, so if you can't kneel on a hard wooden floor because it hurts, then you shouldn't be kneeling at all yet until you built up the function around your sort of feet and hips mainly. So if you're one of my clients, you wouldn't be doing this um, exercise if your knees hurt you. So I know that if you're my client, you're gonna be fine here. What we're going to do is take our hips up to about this height to start with. So you're not coming all the way to a 90 degree angle at the knees like this. You're sort of starting a little bit further back. And you're gonna stretch your hands forwards for me. And you're gonna pop your head on the floor like this. And then you're gonna walk yourself backwards a little bit until you feel like your arms are extended long and that you're gonna hopefully feel that there's a little bit of work going on in your hip flexors here. So you're not going all the way back down to your um, feet like this, but neither are you at that type of angle. You're somewhere halfway in between and you'll feel hopefully your hip flexors switching on to have to kind of stabilize your pelvis. You're gonna spread your fingers really, really wide apart from one another. So we've got these active starfish hands. They're in front of you and your hands, your wrists, your elbows and shoulders are all in alignment with one another. So you're not taking your hands too wide, you're making sure that your hands are at shoulder width apart, which is narrower than most people think. You're gonna have your elbows locked and straight, so there's no bending through your elbows here, and your head is gonna go on the floor like so. And you're just gonna breathe here for a second, and then what's gonna happen is you're gonna push into your hands so you're kind of pushing down and forwards into those nice active spread, stretched out straight fingers and thumbs. And that movement as you push your hands forward and straighten out your arms is gonna push your bum a little bit further backwards. So the hands push down, they are active and they are pushing your bum a little bit further back. The head is completely relaxed. If you cannot relax your head and neck, then I would say don't do this exercise. But there's no tension through my head and my neck, it's just relaxing on the floor. And what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna spend two to three minutes here, pushing into my hands, and breathing in and out of my nose, and into the sides of my ribs. So I'm trying to take my breath into my nose, and down into my diaphragm. So I'm gonna breathe into the back of my ribs, my lower back, the sides of my ribs and into my belly as well. We're really trying to breathe all the way around here, keeping the head and the neck relaxed. One thing to look out for as you do this is that you're not like this. So this can be a very good exercise actually if you are rounded through your back like this, but you're really pushing into your hands and your arms to try and open up the armpit. Can you see the difference there between me just sort of being in this position where I'm very rounded through my upper back to being a bit straighter through my upper back. That will come with that hand and that arm work. And the other thing to be careful of is that you're not really sagging into your chest here. So for some people, they'll kind of flare their rib cage, which is kind of how I am a lot of the time, but they'll sink into their mid back. But that's actually really hard to do if your hips are in the right place. So can you see here how my um, hips have come back over my knees again? So if you're in that kind of halfway in between place, it's really difficult to sag into the rib cage. And you can see there how the top of my spine is nice and long, okay? I'm gonna set the timer here for two minutes. Off we go, pushing into the hands, the fingers and the palms straightening the elbows and just breathing here so in and out of the nose sending that breath deeply into the lower back sides of the ribs the belly 
I can feel my belly expanding onto my thighs as I do this. I can feel my hip flexors in my kind of groin working. I'm keeping my arms long. My hands are active. My head, my neck, my belly, my legs are pretty relaxed really. My hips are working, but my legs are fairly relaxed. Keep breathing the 45 seconds in. If this starts feeling too much, as with any exercise, you can come out of it and um, just stop there. You can just work towards doing two to three minutes of this another time. We're never pushing through pain, but that's not to say that there won't be effort in this exercise. So you might feel like your hands, your arms, your shoulders, your upper back are working quite hard, and that's great. Well, the sun's just coming through the window. It's helping my lighting situation. That's good. I can feel how my right shoulder is a little bit tighter than my left. Got just over 30 seconds left if you're still with me here. Breathing into the back ribs, breathing into the side ribs, elbows stay straight, hands are active, pushing down into the floor to help you get that length through your arms. and relax off there. So that is Child's Pose Elevated Pressure Glide. It's a really good exercise for opening up the shoulders and the arms, working on the functions of, function of the hands, balancing out any kind of rotation through the rib cage, lengthening the thoracic spine, so the kind of mid to upper back, and also a very good one for balancing off the pelvis and getting bilateral hip flexor demands. That's why you might have been feeling your hip flexors a little bit there, even though on the surface this looks like a shoulder exercise. Yes, it's a shoulder exercise, but just like anything that we do, there's always like five or six other things going on at once. So that was Child's Pose Elevated Pressure Glide.